Alrighty, hi everyone. Welcome to our Leader to Leader webinar. Um, tonight we will be covering ceremony planning um, and STEM programming. Um, and if you have any questions throughout the webinar, uh, please type them in your question box on the right hand side of your screen where you have your toolbar. Um, so tonight, So tonight on the panel, we have myself, Melissa Ilias, the Program Coordinator for Service Unit and Troop Support. We have Loretta Lincoln, the Senior Membership Manager for Regions 2 and 3. And we're really lucky tonight to have three um, experienced volunteers um, to come and share their knowledge with you. We have Carol uh, Maolo, Tracy Addy, and Terry Arsenault. Uh, before we get started tonight, I just want to go over um, the remaining Leader to Leader webinars that we have scheduled for the year. Uh, we have one on April 17th about keeping girls motivated um, and older girl activities. And we have one on May 15th about inclusion um, in terms of girls with special needs. And we'd also like to pick a second topic for our last Leader to Leader webinar. Um, so any suggestions that you may have um, or any ideas that um, you'd like to see happen, please send them to program at gsofct.org with leader to leader in the subject line. Um, I'd also like to say that all our past webinars have been recorded and they are on our YouTube channel. Um, so you can watch any of the topics that you missed and this one will be recorded as well. Um, so our first presenter tonight um, is Carol Malo. She will be talking about the end of the year ceremony that she does with her Ridgefield Service Unit. Um, you can see that, you can see her before and after on uh, pictures. She has, uh, was a, she was born in Texas and was a Girl Scout for nine years in Texas and then uh, became involved again when, as a leader when her daughters um, were in kindergarten um, and they are now, um, as you can see, they are now 16 and they are sophomores um, and they have completed their bronze and silver and um, they are planning on doing their gold award. And you can see some of the cool pictures that Carol has, some of her experiences um, in Girl Scouting. So Carol, whenever you're ready. Sounds good. Um, I just wanted to um, start by uh, thanking you for allowing me to speak about this uh, some topic that I'm actually very uh, program, or, uh, very passionate about uh, from a programming perspective as well as um, engagement by the girls because, uh, you know, one of the topics that's near and dear to all of our hearts is, you know, how to keep, the, how to keep them going, how to keep them from falling out, you know, from fifth grade to sixth grade um, and then from uh, eighth grade to high school. And I think the, the end of year program is one such way where when you get the younger girls watching, you know, the older girls as they, you know, get their awards and, you know, have the experience of, you know, seeing the engagement and uh, the achievement that, you know, they begin to be able to envision themselves as being a, award a winners when they're a little bit older. So, you know, from a retention standpoint, I think that uh, the end of year speaks well for that and is just one other way that we can kind of like uh, set the hooks for, you know, later achievement and um, involvement by girls and just keeping them from, from losing interest uh, by seeing themselves in the pictures as they watch the program. Um, but for any of you wondering uh, that this end of year program involves a lot of work and it's not going to happen without a lot of effort and commitment by uh, the leaders and uh, correspondingly the girls. So um, the heavy lifting is really not done by you know just one person. But I will admit that I have a lot on my plate for the entire month of May and then uh, the early days in June, like six or seven days in June leading up to the event, um, I'm really swamped. But once the event is over, I'm ready for summer, and that's when the audits and photos are needed for like newspapers and social media. So I really have to push myself to finish up before closing it out for another year. So uh, trust me, um, you just want to be done by the time the programs run. Uh, but um, I can tell you that one thing that qualifies me or anyone else for running an event like this is just having you know, passion for Girl Scouts. And it's also personally very helpful for me that I have prior experience in selling meetings and events. So 
now that I'm retired, I have much greater appreciation for those uh, people uh, behind the curtains who worked for me to develop and support what I sold to the corporate world. So I'm, I'm a little bit closer to what they did, you know, as it relates to this program. And it's not necessary to have this kind of experience in your wheelhouse to fall back on. Just being passionate and enthusiastic will certainly carry the day, and it's also very helpful to have uh, smaller pieces of the event done by people, you know, something like proofreading, uh, being the person to go out and buy all the awards and put the packets together, uh, to, to print the certificates and to put the names in. I mean, there's, there's a lot of smaller pieces that, uh, you know, when you, when you look at the program as a whole and have completed it, there's, there's a lot of smaller pieces that make it all, make it all work. Now, uh, moving to the next slide. Uh, the things to think about before uh, getting started um, are the things you hear, see here. And in Ridgefield, when we look at the budget, we, we, we try to keep it at around $2,000. And uh, that might sound like a lot of money, but we're asking each troop from Daisy's on up through, um, through the high school to contribute $20 from the troop funds. And um, that gets really close to covering everything. Uh, for uh, running this, uh, but we also get uh, Ridgefield Capital to pay the bill for printing of the program, and in exchange uh, for that, we you know put their ad on the back page of the program. Um, so you know there's a lot of there's a lot that goes into it, but that's the budget piece. Um, there's a lot of other things that have to be done just to secure the venue. There's a lot of paperwork that has to be submitted to the Board of Ed in the fall, right when school gets started. It also involves a walkthrough of the space and generally uh, getting names of people who do A, B, and lights uh, because you're going to have to go over all of the requ your own requirements, um, and the earlier the better. It's never too early to do that. Um, the other thing that you need to focus on in doing one of these is like an overall meeting theme, and um, everything that you do as you you know from the invitation to the core messaging, everything that. Um, Everything that you do for this program really should tie in to the to the message, and I think that that gives it a lot of cohesiveness. And by the time the program's over, you really feel like your message was conveyed. For example, last year the theme was uh, celebrating the hundred years of the Gold Award and changing the world through Gold Award projects. So, in order to gather information on the ceremony pertaining to the awards, uh, we have. Um, and this is a really, really important piece, and I don't think we could do it without it, but we have a, um, a website where we have leaders enter in the name of the award, all of the girls' names, we have email addresses for each girl, addresses for each girl, uh, so that we can get the mailing addresses, because, you know, in order to really have this well attended by families as well as the girls, we've, uh, we think that it's, it's, it, it sounds like, you know, we're more trying to save money than anything else. But um, we feel like it gets better exposure when we send the invitation without an envelope and send it in the form of a postcard. I'll, I can get to, to more of that later. But also on the website, we have leaders uh, or the girls, depending on their age, to enter um, their project descriptions for bronze, silver, and gold, because all of that information is going to be included in the program. So it's very helpful to have everything that we need uh, to be in one place. It's like all, it, it's almost like the Bible for the program. It helps us to build the program. It helps us to, to mail the invitations and all of the things that need to be communicated uh, to the service unit about the awards and um, how to, you know, communicate with people because you know they may, may have eliminated a sentence or data was entered incorrectly. You know, it's very, very helpful for us to be able to go back to the source and verify that the information is correct. I remember last year it drove me crazy because I couldn't understand why we had like eight or ten girls with a Danbury or an other than Ridgefield address. And then I figured out, um, and actually it was by communicating with people, I'd say, you know, are, are you sure you entered in the right address? And it was like, oh yeah, uh, we had uh, some girls that moved, but we were able to, to keep them in the troop because they weren't that far away. Um, you know, so there's things like that that you know really help. You know, when you have all the information in one spot. 
Um, going back to the program itself, um, we um, we like to hand out the program uh, to kind of like keep the girls on track so that they know where we are in the program from end to end. And we like to get the program finalized. And uh, trust me, this is like uh, one backbreaking effort because it's a lot of information. We have to have it finalized and proofread and printed uh, about two weeks prior to the event. So you know, it's 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 like pulling teeth when there's still information that you need to have, and you're you know really backing up uh, to the to the time of the event. So um, the program again, it's nothing fancy. It's like done in black and white, and um, you know, it's it, it, it at this point it's like uh, 24 pages long, and it's uh, it's very simple. Uh, and I'll I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, also, we like to select a community service project. Uh, the theme doesn't again have to connect into the overall, but it is nice as it does. Like an example of where it fits in is that um, this year, you know, our theme is going to be about um, you know, entrepreneurial uh, spirit, and it ties into the 100-year 100 anniver anniversary of selling Girl Scout cookies and developing girl salespeople as entrepreneurs. So an example of tying that in is um, uh, we're talking about um, having the girls um, donate uh, business clothing to a women's shelter um, in Danbury, uh, and this is uh, for displaced women with children to get a job and back on their feet. So, you know, that's one of the things that we're talking about. Uh, the next item is forming a committee of the right people who are enthusiastic about the, the, the various elements. Um, sometimes you just have to put an email out there or um, uh, I think it's called or it, through Rallyhood, like a list of things that you're looking for, um, you know, like a, a troop that would take over, you know, decorations or another troop for flowers. A troop that wants to usher for the ceremony, or um, maybe even a group of girls that wants to run a flag ceremony for the event. Uh, we have um, a table out front where you walk in that will have a big cake, you know, that is decorated for the theme. And then this year, because of the hundredth uh, anniversary of uh, selling Girl Scout cookies, we're thinking of serving, you know, boxes and boxes of Girl Scout cookies as a treat, uh, along with the cake and, you know, the. Uh, the, the liquid refreshment that we're going to serve, probably just small bottles of, of water. Um, going to the next slide um, is a, a the beautiful invitation that we did last year, and I'll, uh, we look for every possible way that we can to save money. And while uh, this invitation was uh, much more attractive that we've done in prior years, in prior years we just took a half of a regular sheet of paper, printed it twice, cut it down the middle, and stuck it in an envelope. And believe it or not, just uh, paying for the ink and the paper and the envelopes, that can get really expensive once you put a stamp on there. So that was where we got the idea of uh, printing a very inexpensive, small postcard size, um, uh, uh, like a marketing piece looking thing that all you have to do is put an address label on the back and uh, a stamp and it's in the mail. And having it exposed, not having to remove the envelope, a lot more people see it, you know, either on the coffee table, on the desk, somewhere in the house, in the bulletin board. Uh, but we also gave um, a bunch of them to, like, leaders to hand out to the girls or any extra people that they want to come to it. And we felt like, you know, it just got really good exposure, not only just for seeing the invitation, but, you know, looking at the um, who's going to be the speaker, asking questions about the speaker, and just helping the leaders uh, chalk it up amongst the troop and, you know, handing them out every time they had a meeting. So we were kind of excited about, you know, something small, but we felt like that uh, doing a postcard uh, saved quite a bit on our, you know, on our budget just for getting the uh, invitation uh, out there. Uh, let's see. Moving to the next slide. Um, the speaker that we had last year, and, you know, when you think about selecting a speaker for your event, um, Sometimes, you know, we'll kind of look back and, and say, wow, that was a very qualified woman. She had an excellent background. Um, she really knew her topic well. She, she's a PhD. She does this, that, and the other. And wow, was she great. That's usually what's going to happen when you have a speaker that's a great speaker for adults. 
And what we're trying to get to, um, and last year I think we had a very good uh, effort towards this, was we had um, Holly Walker uh, speak. And you have no idea how quiet it was in that room. Girls were not talking to each other. They were listening to Holly. They were um, excited. She was very inspirational. She was able to connect with the girls. And I think it was because she was a graduate of Ridgefield High School. And you know she, that was 2011 that she graduated. Uh, she was, at that point, a college graduate. And um, uh, it was really, really cool that she was recruit recruitment manager for Girl Scouts of Connecticut. So um, I think that that goes a long way, just in choosing the right speaker. But um, another part of it is exposure. If you're really going to have your event well attended, because you know it's not like people are paying to get in. You just want you know, really good ex exposure for Girl Scouts, because we have like a first selectman. We have some special guests attending. Um, you really want to do your part by getting newspaper articles, having it out there on social media, um, including the, um, you know, the invitation, you know, what you're trying to convey with the theme, um, and always like discuss with the speaker. You know, there's the part of communicating with the speaker, speaker herself. Uh, what you, what are your expectations? You know, you don't want to leave it to the last minute to say, okay, Holly, um, do you have your speech written? And she goes, you know what? You never even talked to me about what you want me to say. So you know, it's important to you know let the speaker know. You know, the, these are kind of like our expectations. But you know, anything that you want to talk about is great, as long as you um, you know include the elements of inspiring the girls to achieve their goal. Maybe talking a little bit about your gold award and what kept you on track. Um, you know, maybe your college experience and, you know, if, you know, the things that challenged you because they're looking at her, you know, to her in a lot of different ways and admiring her for all that she's achieved and at the same time, you know, here's somebody, you know, who earned a gold award, maybe she can give us some helpful tidbits there. So I think that last year we did a really, really good job on selecting someone who uh, would connect with the girls to the point where, you know, if you can hear a pin drop, you know, you're doing the right thing when it comes to, you know, a bunch of busy girls who are sitting next to each other and can't wait to talk about anything but what you want to talk about. So, um, you know, the guest speaker, you know, was really, really important. And we're putting the final touches on our speaker for next year, and um, we're really excited about that. And um, not going to talk about it until, you know, we have that wrapped up. But um, you know, another really cool thing is that, you know, you have, you, you need to have, and this is in the next slide, you know, local support by people in the town. And uh, Rudy Marconi, our first selectman, attends this, this uh, program year after year, and he sits up in the front at the table, you know, uh, always uh, gives um, his words of wisdom to the girls. But I think more than anything else that he is flabbergasted because Boy Scouts get a ton of attention in our town. He's flabbergasted at the hours of community service and civic work that our girls do, not just from a personal standpoint, but the funding that they provide to our town. And so, you know, having his support and, you know, when the girls want to try to find a, a local project, whether it be bronze, silver, or gold, Rudy is now very much in the loop and he's great to you know, have the girls set up meetings with and say, can you think of any projects right now that you know, really need doing that you know, would have impact for our girls? And he comes up with tons of ideas for the girls to, to do project work on. Going to the next slide, I'll go back to our community service project. Uh, for the end of year ceremony, we like to have a service project that you know, a lot of, like for example, uh, family and children's uh, aid. Last year, you know, we kind of you know knew what we wanted to do, but we didn't know how to figure out the one item that would be very helpful for you know everyone contributing to and putting into the collection boxes. Because uh, family and children's aid, which was the group that we decided to support for uh, the ceremony. Um, you know, it was kind of like 
time to, to glue jello down, really get, especially when they have problems and they haven't uh, really, you know, the shades have been down and nobody, everybody's angry and nobody wants to talk. The way that they get families to engage and begin problem solving is fun board games. And, um, you know, these are people that probably have never played these, you know, games in the past, much less do it within their family. But they find that, you know, beginning um, any intervention with just getting the families relaxed by playing these board games, um, you know, just really went a long way. And they said that a lot of times when they start playing the games, they go home with the games so that the games that they have there in their, um, in their organization's building for, you know, doing this sort of thing, they just don't last very long because they send them home. So we donated tons and tons and tons of games that uh, they were able, you know, we were able to keep them going for, for quite a while. And then the people with the organization, they attended our, uh, our ceremony and they got up and introduced themselves and they said thank you to everyone, but it just brought more exposure to them. And we have lots of girls that, you know, uh, that, that are doing service project work for uh, Family and Children's Aid in Danbury, Connecticut. And it's right there on Division Street. And uh, anybody that goes and knocks on the door and says that I'd like to, to help out or if you could give me the idea for a project, there's, there's quite a few things that you know, can be done there. So it helped us, and it also gave exposure to that organization. Of course, we you know, pick a different one every year. Um, but, but having, you know, having something that, you know, you can have the girls uh, do at the ceremony in support of community service projects, you know, that's something the Girl Scouts do and just makes everybody feel better about it. Um, then um, going one more slide, um, I think one of the most critical elements of the program is having that, uh, you know, the, the, the program uh, to hand out to everyone as they walk in the door. It communicates the theme. It gives out, you know, the, you know, you're not going to remember all of those names and who earned what and what the various projects were. But I will tell you that, um, you know, even being able to refer back to that, you know, year after year, and you know, there are hundreds of gold names in there. There's there's a ton of awards. For example, last year, um, we had over 30 silver awards and uh, 10 girls to earn gold. So, you know, that's a lot to keep track of and, you know, not just community service projects, but, you know, all of the other, you know, awards that we give out. It's just a really cool way to celebrate and trapping all the information in our, um, in our program is just a great, great thing to have. I, I just don't think we could probably, you know, possibly run this thing without the program. It also helps the girl under, girls understand the program flow and where we are in the program and when it's time for them to, you know, each group to get up and walk across the stage. Um, one of the things that uh, to keep in mind is it doesn't have to be fancy. This is a, um, uh, this is something that's very simplistic. Um, and in terms of getting people on board, we need proofreaders. We need someone to, to, to pick, up the, uh, pick, up, pick up the box of programs when they're done. Um, and they're, you know, eight and a half by eleven folded pieces of paper down the middle. And uh, right now we're at about twenty-four or total pages, or you know, twelve sheets of paper folded down the middle. And in order to, you know, beautifully print these with just black and white, uh, we use Ridgefield Printing, and the cost to print them is about two hundred and fifty dollars. And uh, it communicates the theme, has all the girls' names in it. You know, proofreading is for getting the names spelled correctly making sure that's done, you know, all the punctuation in the right space, everything spelled correctly, cohesive sentences, because, you know, this is communicating the girls' project work, and we want it to, to, to be communicated well. And believe me, it's not always um, perfect when you get it. And there's a lot of editing and, you know, sentence shortening, and, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of work to get that thing, you know, to, to, to correct by the time you get to the print stage. So um, that's pretty much it, you know, as far as what I wanted to communicate uh, to all of you. Um, this thing is, for Ridgefield has grown from year to year. We're really proud of, you know, what we do. Um, one of the, the final wrap-up slides I have here before taking questions is I have a photo of the Nightingales. Uh, the Nightingales are a group of singers 
uh, and it actually came into being through someone's gold project. So they've been singing at various uh, ceremonies, and, and um, it doesn't it isn't just limited to Girl Scouts, but it's a group of girls that get together for breakfast every Saturday morning, and they get together two nights a week to go through, you know, practicing their songs and work on their harmony, and maybe even take on a new song. But last year we asked asked them to lead us in the Star Spangled Banner at the beginning of the program. And um, at the end of the program, we had them sing some you know, very strong like girl movement, not necessarily Girl Scout songs, but you know, things that support you know, a strong woman image. And um, they did, they, you know, some of them wore the Girl Scout uniform. They have great harmony. You can tell these girls are you know, like each other and have good camaraderie. And uh, that was an excellent way to, to wrap up, you know, a, a year of Girl Scouting is, you know, them singing at the very end. So it was a beautiful program. We had great speakers. The, the girls were, you know, were great participants in it. And each one of them had some sort of role, whether it be an usher or, you know, part of the, the flag ceremony. But um, everyone does their part, and it's really good. It's grown over the years. And uh, at this point, we can, you know, fill, an, fill the Ridgefield High School Auditorium with the girls and their parents and the leaders and, you know, everyone that's uh, proud of their year's achievement. And just, you know, going back to that whole topic of, of retention, it's really wonderful to get the, the, the girls that are kindergarten age through fifth grade because the attendees and the people that are recognized are fifth on up. And, um, you know, when those, when those little girls are looking at uh, uh, being inspired by the older girls, you know, we really feel like it helps with the retention of them, you know, being inspired and, you know, seeing themselves on that stage someday and them earning gold or even some of the other awards. And, um, you know, we, we have a lot of pride in this. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to, to talk about that tonight and at this point to open it uh, to any questions anyone has. Happy to answer. Thank you, Carol. So if anyone has any questions for Carol, please feel free to type them in your question box on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, let's see. I think if you, if you think of questions later on also, you can still ask about this, um, even if we are um, moved on to STEM activities. So let me just... All right, it doesn't look like we have any questions right now, but we may have some later. Um, so Carol, stand by just in case. <laughs> All right, so thank you. Um, so we're switching gears to STEM uh, programming, and our first presenter on that is Tracy Addy. Um, and she has a Bachelor of Science in Biology, a Master's of Philosophy in Experimental Pathology, and a PhD in Science Education. Um, she is the Howard Hughes Medical Institute Program Director at the Yale Center for Teaching and Learning. Um, she has expertise and passion in STEM teaching. Um, her daughter is now a sixth grade cadet in Cheshire, Connecticut. Um, she runs a STEM playgroup for five to eight year olds in her town. And this year she has begun uh, working with Girl Scouts in her town on STEM programming. So Tracy, whenever you're ready. Great, thank you. Yes, um, <clears throat> so as you can see, I'm very passionate about science and STEM education. Um, that's kind of what I do, and it's my love, and it's my dream. And it's really exciting to be able to start uh, working with Girl Scouts this year um, with STEM programming in my town. And just to give you a little bit of history, um, my daughter's been a Girl Scout since my second grade, and um, you know it's been great. And also, my son—he's not—he's—he's not, he's, he's not in a Boy Scouts or anything right now. But I started that play group, that STEM play group for his age, and so I did that for, for a couple of years, and I'm continuing to do it. And what sparked my interest was thinking about how can I help the Girl Scouts of my town also. And so I had some, we had some events for our troop, but I was thinking, wow, this will be great for the town, the girls in the town to actually go in and do more STEM activities. So why STEM for Girl Scouts? I kind of, you know, put this slide in here. Um, and if we look at like research and STEM, we lose our girls and, and we just lose them really early. Um, some things that really kind of provoke me to think about, like why to, to work with Girl Scouts as a volunteer in, in STEM, is uh, even my daughter's age. She's now sixth grade, and by they say by around middle school is when um, 
the girls really think that STEM is just for boys and they have a lot of other ideas. And then as you kind of go up along the pipeline, like like along the years, because um, I see this because this, this was my path as well, but you just see girls drop out over, more and more and more. And nowadays there's all these great programs for girls, which is great. So it's going to be great to see what happens as the years go on. But if you look at this um, slide, you can see um, that 74% of teen girls are interested. So a lot of girls like science, technology, engineering, and math, um, one or all, or you know, portions of them. But the problem is, when we look at like who's graduating, um, it's, own, it's not mostly girls, right? It's mostly um, boys who are getting the degrees. And also, when they go higher and higher, um, they, there's also more males than, than females. So you can advance the slide. So this was kind of my, um, you know, my, my thought of like, wow, let's start early. And there's a lot of research in science that says the earlier exposure that kids have, the better outcomes they have, the better, the more you know, they're likely to like science. Um, and especially if it's positive, I know we, we, um, we were talking beforehand before this um, discussion, but if it's not like, you know, positive, it's the kids are going to, girls are going to have a hard time, you know, enjoying it and embracing it. So first I wanted to share a few things that I did with our troop, um, our town this year um, and some things that, you know, I'm gonna, we're going to do, um, but I've been doing doing, like I said, the STEM programs for my, my, um, a, a small play group in my town for about um, the last two years. So they, we've done also other things too, which have been really fun. Um, the first event we had last year, this past year, 2016 to 17, was an engineering carnival. So I had this idea um, and inspired by thinking about engineering and like, if, and just exposing the girls to what does it mean to be an engineer? And we can actually have fun like building things. So um, I ultimately came up with the theme of a carnival and we had, um, it's actually not in the pictures, that would have been nice if we got that too. Well, kind of in the pictures. Um, so we had cotton candy, we had popcorn, you know, we just had like a good time around um, engineering. So the goal of this was for the girls to build catapults for a ball toss game, and I got this inspiration from the Girl Scouts Tech, uh, well, it's not Girl Scouts, but it's Tech Bridge with its uh, collaboration with Girl Scouts kit. Um, and it was thinking about like how can girls like create, use the engineering process to design things that are like tools that, that can be used for something useful. And so in this case, the girls were going to build a catapult for a ball toss game. And so if you look at the pictures there, you can kind of see I got these like big blow ups so that the girls, when they built their catapults, they could actually launch the ping pong balls into the um, into the little holes there. So this was kind of inspired through that and um, the kit, I did actually change a little bit from the kit. Um, I wanted to make their, their catapults a little bit more powerful so we ended up using, and you can kind of see this if you look closely at the girls, but we ended up using um, wooden sticks like dowel rods um, that I got like from Home Depot um, and I painted them and everything so they had sparkle ones in different colors, you know, made it kind of fun. And then they put them together with th these different rubber bands. And I ended up getting like an, a model of this on the internet of somebody who had actually done this for their children, with their children. So um, they created their catapult. So the first thing was to think about like what is, um, what is a simple machine, which a lot of the girls talk about in school. Um, and we talked about levers, etc. And we, we did the lesson that was in the Tech Bridge kit, some of the lesson. And then we went off and we started building. And I let the girls um, build. I gave them like a, a model, like what it could look like. And then I told them, you, you know, you can feel free to change it up. And they did. They did, you know, they changed it. Some of them, some of them, you know, went exactly the way that, you know, the model was. And we used all, we took all of them when they built them. Um, we actually, you know, they went to the little line and they tried to see if it would work. And so in an engineering design, like, you have to see, does it work? And if your tool you made does not work, then you go back and you improve it. And I was trying to tell the girls that, like, this is kind of process and engineering that, like, you know, the first time they make things, it doesn't work. And it was really nice to see the girls, you know, they were fine with that. Okay, okay, what do I have to change? I have to go back and do this a little better. I want to make it go further, etc. So they had a lot of fun doing that. And 
I actually invited three levels this 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 um, particular event because I wasn't sure how many would be there, um, and it was like an initial event. So I invited we invited brownies, juniors, and cadets, and I had a lot of help from my troop. Um, the, the leaders of my troop and, and volunteers in the troop itself, and I also had asked the uh, troop leaders from the girls who came to actually come, from the girls who um, wanted to come to actually come to, like one, one or two adults, just to help the girls, because this was um, something where a lot of help is needed to like help them with, you know, holding the dowel rods, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and that seemed to work out really nicely. Um, the girls had a lot of fun. We had it at our park and rec center. Um, so I did end up reserving that and just like setting everything up. And you can kind of see on the bottom um, right picture, you can see um, all the, you know, many of the girls and having a lot of fun. We did for this particular event award prizes um, to the ones that were able to shoot the catapult along the farthest from each level too. So that was kind of fun as well. But overall the girls, you know, they seemed to have a great experience and I got a lot of good feedback after that. So that was one particular event, and after I talk about some of the events, I'll talk about like kind of like my strategies too, if that's if that's helpful. So we can advance to the next event. Um, just recently, um, I wanted to also make sure that we had more events, and this is just the, my first year doing this, so there's a lot of like you know trial and error, I guess, and thinking about what's what what'll work. But I wanted to also have an event for the youngest girls too. So the last event, you know, was kind of brownie it up, and um, my daughter's troop was there, but you know, they're cadets. But I wanted to go lower and also have an event that the daisies um, could also participate in. So I thought I could seek out um, some other sources. So maybe, you know, there's some programs out there that would work really well for daisies. So I ended up meeting a woman who leads a program called a, a business called Coology, um, and she's a STEM business. She's a former elementary school teacher. And she runs a um, this business. I ended up seeing her, meeting her at another event, and I just thought, wow, this would be perfect for the daisies. So um, we ended up picking one of her workshops, and she came. And in this particular event, it was at one of our local churches where we have a lot of our meetings. Um, and so, if you look here, you can see the the, the girls, and then there's the Coology, um, Claudia from Coology. And essentially, the girls in this case. They looked at like different properties of water. So she had a whole workshop that um, she's, you know, she's done with um, many different groups. She goes to schools, you know, scouts, etc. So if you look closely, you can see the girls there looking at like H2O. You can see HHO, and then um, they're looking at adding salt in water, salt in the water, and they tried to like make the an egg float. So if you add enough salt, you you know you can actually make it float. And she intentionally did that. She did that as a whole demo because of time. And then the girls are also on the bottom right. They have little like droppers, and they're um, they have they drop water on wax paper, and then they kind of move the water around wax paper. So they explored like a lot of the different properties. And then in the end, um, you can't actually see this that well in this picture, but in the top right picture, I had the girls. I I ended with Coology. Um, they she ended her program, and then we let we extended it for half an hour. And the girls basically built these little water molecules out of toothpicks and gum and uh, dots, like gumdrops. So that was fun. So they can actually look at them, and they're actually holding them up in that particular picture. So that was one another event that we did. So on the next slide, um, the event, one of the events that's coming up is um, going to be, again, for the older girls, and that's going to be looking at the night sky. So I also, you know, I'm always, like, looking around for different fun STEM things, and I think there's a lot of neat ways to do this, but this particular one um, is at a, is a planetarium um, in, near us in Wallingford, and it's at, May, it's at the high school, um, Sheehan High School school. And so I had gone there for my son and they had a wonderful show and it was, it was just really neat and it was a nice narration. The um, facilitator, James, he did a great job. And they do events all the time with scouts. So um, the next session we're going to have is in April. And what we've decided, I was working out with James, is that 
um, the girls will go outside if the night's clear and they'll look at all the stars or identify you know the, the planets etc um, depending on the night sky and then they'll go in and they'll do a um, full dome show on telescopes and they have a nice little show that the girls will see um, as well so that'll be kind of you know our probably the last session for this particular year and then as I you know as we gear up I'll think about like all the, the sessions that we're gonna think about for the next year so on the next slide, I can share a little bit about like my thinking for a STEM event. So when I thought of topics, um, I thought of just current or interesting topics in STEM and what I thought girls would find interesting and thinking of the level of the girls as well. Um, and also the extent of how much you know help also for the depending on the level. Um, I also use the you know the, the tech bridge kits. They have those for engineering. Um, so I think those provide a good framework of like if you're thinking of an engineering type of um, program and then just adapting it, you know, as, as it fits. And I also looked at like different businesses around that did STEM as well and also the planetarium. Um, and then a, a big thing about I think also these events is like where do you have them? And so, I, you know, for us, the, we, we were able to meet in our local church. We have a, the, the town has a, you know, kind of like a, an ongoing um, arrangement with the the church, but we're not always able to meet there because they they also have events too. So sometimes you know going to the community center, um, libraries, and also businesses um, have been venues. You know I've thought about also this other one will be at the high school, so that's great. And then for advertising, so um, I've, in partnership with my um, with the town, the town the manager, um, she's been great, and I've been working with her and. So I mentioned basically the idea to her, what does she think about this and what can we do with the girls? And so then she said, well, it's a great idea, just come to our leader meetings. And so I would come to the leader meeting and just talk to the leaders about like, oh, this event, you know, we're trying to see what we can do, you know, to, it, for these particular level of girls. Um, and this is what we're thinking and, you know, we'd love for you to come and I'd create a flyer. Um, and then I'd also email it to the manager, and she would she would always um, email it out to all the troop leaders, and also talk to my troop, you know, also about you know help um, with it as well. My troop mostly will help, you know, m made sense more to help obviously with the older girls events, but you know, some sometimes they'd be willing to do potentially the other ones as well. Um, but the other leaders were very very excited about it, and they really enjoy it. They really um, were interested in these these events. Um, we also have a community Facebook site for our town. Um, which is a private site, so I also would advertise them there, and that was great because then there's a lot of back and forth that I could do there. And then the last thing that I did for um, RSVPing, which I found useful, the only thing is using some programs requires, it, it charges a fee, so that's the plus and minuses. Um, so, I mean, a regular check, you can, you know, obviously keep track for, for payment, etc. but I ended up using this program called Eventbrite, which I've used for events before. Um, and that, and again, it does charge a little fee off of the to the ticket a little bit. So if they just account for that, if you know that's the method of going. But it's nice because it's online, everything's there, um, and they can all register in that way. And then I've talked a little bit about the assistance. So the leadership has been great in the town, and the troop leaders, and also advanced Girl Scouts. You know, helping with the events is awesome as well. Helping the younger girls, I think that's a great model as well. So. Those are kind of the big strategies I've used, and I'm hoping and planning to um, plan a lot more this year. It's kind of, you know, it was my first year doing it, so now I have a really good, I feel like I have a good idea of, like, even doing a lot more next year, um, and even with our, um, the oldest girls, too, maybe a little bit more, too, um, and, and the younger girls. So I'm looking forward to, like, the next year and thinking about planning as well. So I think that's all the slides I have, and I'd also be happy to answer any questions. Yeah. Thank you, Tracy. So if anybody has any questions for Tracy, please feel free to type them in your question box on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, again, like if you think of them later, you can still type them later. Um, so it doesn't look like we have any questions right now, but we'll, we'll move on and then possibly we'll have some later. Let's see. So our next presenter tonight is Terry Arsenault. She has a bachelor's in biology from Fairfield University. She has a master's in forestry from the University of Vermont. She, is, um, she has been a chemist at the Connecticut Agricultural Experiment Station since 1990. Um, she's been a Girl Scout troop leader since 2004. 
um, and she's currently a leader uh, for fourth grade juniors. And you can see her, she's there on the, she's the third one from the left with her three co-leaders. Um, so, tr um, Terry, whenever you're ready. Okay, I'm ready. Um, so, to me, I always like uh, that Girl Scouts is experiential learning, and I try to make my troop meeting very hands-on and try to broaden their experiences as much as possible because I think it's a really great way for girls to um, experience a lot of different things that they may not have an opportunity to experience otherwise. I absolutely love doing things with the girls, going on trips, doing sleepovers, and of course I also love to get really messy. Mm -hmm. um, this stuff right here, this oobleck, is uh, wonderfully messy and best done outside. If you hit this, if you move really slowly through this liquid, it's a mixture of cornstarch and water. And if you move slowly, it's like a liquid. But if you hit it hard, it's very solid. So it's really a great, fun thing for the girls to play with and get their hands in and get dirty with. Um, I did order 50-pound bags of cornstarch online. Um, they're much, much cheaper than those little boxes you can get at the grocery store and uh, it was much, much cheaper. It does require some patience to mix this stuff. You have to put the water in very slowly, otherwise it can get too liquidy, and it can be a little bit tedious to kind of get it to the right consistency, but when you can get it to the right consistency, it's really a lot of fun to play with. Next slide. Um, here our girls are experiencing what we call chromatography. Chromatography is scientific terms means separation. So right here, what they do is they draw on some sort of fabric with some color marker, and then they were spraying it with an alcohol squirt bottle, which causes the marker to separate into the different colors that make up the, the uh, ink. We did find that you have to experience a little bit with the different markers, because some markers will separate much better than others, like you think black markers will separate into all kinds of colors, but in fact, you find that Maybe it's a purple marker that gives you better color. So you have to kind of play with the markers a little bit in order to get this to work right. But it certainly is um, very interesting for a lot of the girls when they see the colors separating into multiple different colors. And they can make some really pretty designs and uh, decorate t-shirts or things like that. Next. Um, Council often offers these New England Air Museum overnights. I highly recommend these. I found that this was a lot of fun for the girls. Um, they have a lot of different activities for the girls to engage in. Uh, they do allow the girls to go and sit actually in the cockpits of the plane, and they actually let them like flip switches and things like that, which I thought was really cool. They had a panel of pilots and professional uh, women, engineers, and things like that for the girls to talk to. And they were able to ask them questions and learn about or explore careers in that field. This was really uh, one of my favorite overnights that I've done with the girls. Next. OK, so Council offers this opportunity. Also, it's called Exploring Ham and Asset. They offer it um, frequently. But also, if you want to run this for your town, which is what I did here, I just call up the Cedar Island Marina. They have a research laboratory, and they will arrange a date and time that's convenient for you. And this was actually in September of last year. And I would have to say that it's really just loads of fun for the girls to get in the water, and they can kick around the mud, and they can pick up the shells. And then the, the, uh, the students there will help them. Um, answer questions about what it is that they're seeing. And um, of course, good weather does make a, this day a lot more fun, but it's still a great time. And the girls do absolutely love to get really dirty and muddy. <laughs> Next. <laughs> um, the Connecticut Science Center in Hartford is an absolute uh, blast for anybody to go and visit. This was on Scout Day last year in December. They have frequent Scout Days, and they offer overnights and things like that. This museum is so wonderfully hands-on compared to other museums that you may visit that um, it really is appropriate for girls of all ages, and there's wonderful learning experiences 
And if you go to the website, you can go to the groups page and you can see what kind of special events they have for activities. And then once you get on their, their mailing list, they totally like send you emails all the time about the different um, things that they're offering specifically for scouts. So I would highly recommend a visit to the Connecticut Science Center. Um, next. So my girls are juniors, and we were told that our local police department would help the girls earn their detective badge. And we found that our police department was really more than happy to set this up for us. And what they did was they staged a robbery at the local deli, and they had money on the floor, and they had this little scene with a broken window, and they said somebody broke the window and climbed through the window, and they had hair fibers on the chair, and we were supposed to look at the hair and tell who, based on the pictures on the wall, committed the crime. And the best part of it was when they pulled out the fingerprint dusting kit, and they let the girls dust for fingerprints, and then they showed how they, the fingerprints, you can see them after you dust it with the light powder, and then you can take the tape onto the light powder and you can um, pull the fingerprint off of the window. Um, so I would highly recommend that you contact your local police department to help you with this and see whether or not they're willing. I think most police departments do have an outreach program where they will um, do things with the girls. So next, uh, my juniors have also worked on our entertainment technology badge. In this picture, we had our librarian work with the girls with the green screen. Each of the girls was able to pick a background that they wanted to overlay, and then they could take their own picture and put it into the background. The librarian also helped us with a coding game um, and allowed them to earn their technology badge. One of our favorite badges <laughs> as brownies was certainly the home scientist badge, and I would highly recommend this one. We had the girls put heavy cream in a cup, and if you just shake it enough, it actually will turn into butter. So we had them make butter, and then they had to eat the butter, and that was certainly um, one of our fun days. Also, as part of the Home Scientist badge, we blew up balloons with vinegar baking soda. And this one is a little bit tricky and kind of messy, but what I did was I had the girls you pour a little bit of baking soda into the bottom of the uh, water bottle, and then we had a scoop, and I could scoop the, the baking soda into the water bottle and then put the balloon on top of the water bottle very quickly. Um, the problem with doing it was sort of that the girls were tipping the water bottles over, uh, and so I had one girl try to hold the water bottle while the other girl put it on the top, but what happens is the water bottles, because they make them you know, they're saving on the plastic, so the water bottles tend to collapse much easier than they used to. So you might want to try a stick for a bottle like a soda bottle. Um, but you have to experience or practice a little bit with the size of the balloon that you're going to blow up and the size of the opening on the water bottle to make sure that you can get the water bottle over or the balloon over the top because otherwise you have trouble with the balloon actually ripping as you're trying to get it on. So I would say that you definitely want to practice this one at home a little bit, but certainly um, it was certainly a lot of fun even though it did make a bit of a mess. And even if you didn't get the balloon on the top, they certainly enjoyed all of the bubbles and everything coming out of the water bottle. Mm -hmm. And my last picture is um, one of my daughters, and I was just it just struck me that this was a picture of a girl who really is showing courage, character, and confidence. And, um, you know, I think that's what we all look for. And uh, I think that I'm open to questions. <laughs> yeah, so if anybody has any questions uh, for Terry, please feel free to put them um, in the question box on your, the right-hand side of your screen. Um, all right, thank you, Terry, for that. That was great. Um, all right, so just before we end tonight, I do want to mention that uh, Tracy did mention that uh, our tech bridge kits that uh, can be rented from council. Um, so there's five of them, um, and I just want to go through each one. Um, so there's one called Make It Green, um, where the girls will explore each stage of the green design process, and they're going to build with recycled, recycled materials. 
Um, there's one called Design Time, where they work through um, the engineering design process. There's one called Power It Up, where they learn about electronics um, and circuit circuitry through a series of hands-on investigations. There's Thrill Builders, uh, where they explore simple machines and they build a merry-go-round, a beanbag toss, and a race car. And there's Engineers to the Rescue, uh, which are, are survival skills based on science, and the girls will design water filters, wind-powered cranks, um, a message-carrying car, and a safe shelter. Um, so if you have any questions about those, um, if you need further details or about specific activities in each kit, um, you can contact our outdoor STEM specialist, Danny Lachance, um, and she'd, she'd be happy to explain everything to you. Um, so. I uh, also wanted to mention that uh, when you're picking STEM activities, a good place to look is the program resource guide. Um, so we actually, so on my additional update slide, I do have some um, STEM programs coming up for the rest of the year, um, and three of them I starred are not in the program resource guide. Um, for whatever reason, they didn't make it soon enough. So uh, the first one is Challenger Earth um, at the Discovery Museum on April 21st. Um, that one is not yet in the program resource guide, but you can still register online for it. Um, Animal Habitats, Brownie Bugs, and Brownie Hiker are all happening at the Audubon Society um, on April 22nd. Um, Zoo in the Sky is happening at the Discovery Museum on April 29th. Um, Engineering for Brownies will be happening at Camp Patagansett on April 29th. Um, Juniper Junior, uh, Juniper Junior's Dabbler Day will be happening on April 30th at Camp Candlewood. Um, Challenger Moon at the Discovery Museum in Bridgeport again is happening on May 5th. Um, we're having a program called Marine Animal Habitat Exploration on May 6th. Um, the Breathe Journey Weekend uh, for cadets is happening on May 19th through the 21st. Um, another program that is not in the program resource guide is uh, the Water Badge Workshop for seniors, and that is on May 27th. Uh, we have Ocean Adventures happening on June 3rd. Uh, Paddle Away is also not in the program resource guide. Um, it's happening on June 17th. Um, the So What Journey Weekend is happening September 15th through the 17th. And the last one that isn't in the program resource guide is the STEM Ocean Science program, and it is happening on September 30th. Um, so if anybody has any questions before we end, please type them in the box. I don't see any questions. Um, okay, so I just did want to mention that we'd love to hear feedback uh, about what you thought about this webinar. Um, and if you could send it to program at gsfct org that'd be great. Uh, we'd also like to hear any improvements, um, things you like, things you didn't like, ideas for next time, um, and even if you can think of an, um, a topic you'd like to see um, for our last webinar um, on May 15th, that would be wonderful. Um, so if no one has any questions, I think we'll end tonight. D does that sound good? Anybody have any questions? Well, it doesn't look like anybody has any questions. Hello? Yes? Hello? Still here? This is Carol, still here. Oh, hi, Carol. Um, so no I, questions. All right, so then I guess uh, we'll end for tonight. So I just want to thank all our presenters. Thank you guys so much for presenting. It was great. Um, so, yeah, um, I really appreciate you guys coming and presenting on these topics.